Hey, my name's Ray, and you're watching Ray of Books, and welcome to the 21st installment in my currently checked out series. If you've never seen any of my currently checked out videos before, essentially the purpose of this series is to share with y'all the books and resources available through public libraries. I live in San Francisco, so the San Francisco Public Library System is the one I utilize the most often. However, I do utilize library systems throughout the state of California. At the end of each video, I'll be giving y'all a price tally on how much money I saved by using the resources available to me through my local public libraries. Everything in this video was checked out between January 1st and January 8th. I tried to be really intentional with my checking out this time around, and I think I did a pretty good job. There's only five books, so let's just get into it. The first book that I have checked out is an ebook, and it is The Monsters We Defy by Leslie Penelope. And I actually 110% thought that I put a hold on the physical copy of the book, but I guess I sillyly put a hold on the ebook version. It can't be me only making that grave error in these library streets. Like, they're someone else has had to have done that before. Anywho, what drew me into this one is not only is it a historical fiction, it is also a paranormal fiction. It features two main characters. There is Clara, who is a supernatural talk to spirits type of chick, and Israel, who is a supernaturally enhanced jazz musician. And together, these two have to pull off a near impossible heist of stealing a magical ring from an incredibly rich so socialite. <laughs> the story takes place in Washington DC in 1925. Next up we have Absolution by Murder, A Sister Fidelma Mystery by Peter Tremaine, and this is probably the saddest ebook cover I have ever seen. I have been wanting to read a good medieval murder mystery for a hot minute, and as I was browsing the catalog, I came across Tremaine's newer book, Death of a Heretic, and that had everything, everything that I was looking for, except, except, it's the 33rd book in this Sister Fidelma series. So of course, one, I was incredibly excited that there's 33 books in this series, and two, I was like, ooh, I gotta go find the first one. Unfortunately for me, SFPL does not own a physical copy of the book, but fortunately for me, they own an ebook version of the book. And of course, that is the one that I currently have checked out. Sister Fidelma is a nun, of course, and she's a special kind of nun that is allowed to practice law, and the story takes place in 7th century Ireland. From what I understand is in this particular story, there is a ecclesiastical conclave going on to settle the beef between Roman and Celtic branches of Christianity. At this conclave, an abbess who is a strong advocate for the Celtic branch of Christianity is found murdered and Sister Fidelma is out to find out who done did it. I love medieval history and I love medieval murders, so I'm really excited about this one. Unfortunately, I got a few pages in and I realized that reading it in ebook format is not how I want to submerge myself into the world. So, also incredibly luckily for me, I was able to request a physical copy of this book from Link Plus. What Link Plus is, is it is a union catalog of holdings from California libraries and libraries share their books with each other. So if a book is nowhere to be found in my library system, or at least nowhere to be physically found in my library system, I have the great joy and blessing of being able to request it from another library system who probably does have it. If you happen to live in the state of California, I will leave a link to what Link Plus really is down in the description box below. And if you have any questions, I can try my absolute hardest as a librarian who lives and works in California to answer some of those questions for you. The next three books are all children's books. I am a children's librarian, which means I do occasionally delve into reading children's books in order to provide decent reader's advisory to the kids that I serve. 
So the next book that I currently have checked out is Courtney Crumman, The Night Things by Ted Nefay. Nefay. I tried. I was browsing the graphic novel shelf at a library that I was visiting when I came across this one and after flipping through a few pages and reading a little bit of the synopsis I was like you know what this sounds this sounds like it could be a pretty fun read and then I found out that the author slash illustrator lives in San Francisco so I was like I, I have to check this out I must I must check this out basically it follows the story of this very grumpy and grumpy middle schooler named Courtney whose social ladder climbing parents have run out of cash and have run out of resources and move to Hillsboro which if you live in San Francisco Hillsboro is like this incredibly bougie enclave like somewhere somewhere I don't even know where it is to be honest but it's like one of those weird bougie cities anyway they move her to Hillsboro to go live with her super duper creepy great uncle and while she is living with her super duper creepy great uncle with her parents she discovers that monsters and magic are indeed very very real so it sounds like a really fun fantasy maybe slightly horror, maybe a little bit of a mystery children's graphic novel. And then I have another children's graphic novel checked out and it is Salt Magic by Hope Larson and illustrated by Rebecca Mock. This was a pure title, cover, and flip through grab for me. I... I love the cover. I love the cover so incredibly much. There is no synopsis located anywhere on this book, at least not that I could find and not on the edition that I grabbed off the shelf. And usually, usually I tend to avoid books that don't have synopses on them because I want, I want to know what it is that I might be reading. But the cover on this one and the title and that quick flip through convinced me that I absolutely had to check it out. And then I did a little bit of searching on the internets and according to Penguin Random House, this is a book about a jealous witch, a withering curse, and one girl who will do anything at all to save her family. And that sounds like a fun time to me. So I'm looking forward to reading it. Like I'm really looking forward to reading it. And the last book that I have checked out is Paradise on Fire by Jewel Parker Rhodes. I stumbled across Dr. Rhodes books a few years back but I only stumbled across them in the adult genre world. I was looking for a good black mystery to read and I read her I read part of her book Voodoo Season and I didn't finish it but I do remember absolutely loving her writing style. So when I discovered that she writes a whole bunch of children's books and I believe someone at some junction on this channel had mentioned Bayou Magic to me and I was like oh yeah I should read that and then once again I read part of it and then life happened and I didn't finish reading it. So one of my side quests for this year is to read all of Jewel Parker Rhodes children's books and then give her adult books another shot. But anywho I am talking too much about other things. This book is about a young girl named Addie whose parents have tragically died in a fire and she goes and lives with her grandmother. Many years later her grandmother sends her off to a wilderness training camp and at this camp there are a few other black city kids and I'm a sucker for books that feature nature and black city kids and this camp sends them to the beautiful state of California where they learn how to rock climb, they learn some hiking, they learn campfire etiquette, and then Addie's worst fear comes true and they're all caught up in a forest fire and Addie has to lead everyone to safety. Now this sounds incredibly stressful but I'm also incredibly intrigued by it so this is another one that I'm really looking forward to reading and I'm probably going to pick up next. And that's it, those are the five books that I have checked out. Now for the big reveal how much money did I save by checking out all these books from the public library well I'll have you know that I saved $64.59 which is absolutely not too shabby 
Now, it wouldn't be a currently checked out video if I did not ask some questions of y'all. First of which is what do you currently have checked out? And if you are not a library user or if you don't have anything currently checked out at this moment in time, the second question is do you feel like there are some books that are better as ebooks and there are some books that are better as physical books? For me, I strongly believe there is. Like I feel like I can't properly sink into historical fiction or fantasy books unless they're in physical format. However, I could do science fiction in an ebook format and pretty much anything else can also be in an ebook format, but yeah, mysteries, historical fiction, fantasy, and romance for the most part I really enjoy like the physical book feel but everything else can just be an ebook and that's it for this video thank you all so 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 much for watching if you enjoyed this give the video a thumbs up it helps me out somewhere in this algorithm and if you'd like to sporadically hear me babble about books hit that subscribe button thank you so 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 much for watching i hope everyone is having a wonderful day and reading wonderful books and i'll catch you in the next one toodles